Patrick Vieira has been sacked as Crystal Palace boss. It's a harsh decision, which is why I've appointed him as manager of Juventus for this rebuild. With their licensing return to FIFA 23, Juve make for an ideal career mode. Vieira actually spent a single season at the club as a player before swift exit to Inter Milan. One of the outcomes of the 2006 Italian football scandal known as Calciopoli was the enforced relegation of Juventus to Serie B. Fast forward to the present day and the club has received a 15 points deduction from their league tally following an investigation into their past transfer dealings. We're going to place a reset on the club's massive transfer budget by offloading any players that are older than 25 in the squad, including big name recent arrivals like Paul Pogba. The reasoning for this is to build the team back up via its already impressive network of younger players and promising signings, which is where I think Vieira's greatest strength as a manager lies. Kicking off the signings with a player that I brought in arguably more than any other player in FIFA 23 career mode. That being Kepram Turam, he just draws so many similarities to Patrick Vieira when he was in his prime. The high attacking work rate, high defensive work rate midfielder will become a staple in our starting 11. Not to mention he currently plays at Nice, a club that Vieira has managed in the past. It'll be a 35 million deal to complete the signing of Toram, considering that he's got the exciting prospect status. I was going to make this deal happen by all means necessary. You know I had to bring in at least a few Crystal Palace players in this rebuild. Starting with one of their more recent additions in Chris Richards. Although he suffered from some injury problems this season, when he has featured for Palace, he has been impressive. I also think he has a bright future with the U.S. men's national team, and he'll be joining the likes of Weston McKenney at Juve once he returns from his Leeds loan spell. Significantly less funds to complete this signing, only 10 million, and with all our outgoing departures, we needed to improve our defense ASAP. While I intend on primarily focusing on younger players for transfers, there's a goalkeeper who we can't yet acquire in Season 1. So I figured a suitable alternative is Gianluigi Buffon, of course he's known for his career at Juventus. Such an impressive run as their number one, but there are a couple of trophies that he has still yet to check off. It'll be a 1 million deal for our new number one, a player for the history books, and at minimum he's going to provide some veteran leadership for us. But I do want to build up our network of youth academy talents. We begin with a 5 star experience, 4 star judgment scout from Italy. We'll be adding a 5 star, 5 star scout from Croatia, along with another 5 star, 5 star scout from Austria. Our Italian scout will stay in his home country this season, searching for any type type of player our Croatian scout heading to France, Vieira's home country, also searching for any type of player. And the top four nationality at Juve is Brazil. Because the Brazilian league is not in FIFA anymore, I thought this would be a good final country to scout. But we will start this save with a homegrown talent. Nicolas Coppola is a 71 rated 17 year old. Originally listed as a center forward slash striker, he's got 80 to 94 potential. And I think we will make that position change over to striker. It gives him a plus two in his rating, already putting him into the Mix of squad rotation. Clubs around the world already taking notice of this young talent. Newcastle United submitting a 12.5 million bid, but we will begin our Serie A season against Fiorentina. After all the arrivals and departures, this is what the team is looking like. It's only uphill from here, but we will kick off the season with a 1-0 victory. Vlahovic scoring against his former team. We also still have the Champions League to consider. For the group stage, we've got PSG, Benfica, and Trumzu. More often moving forward, I want to highlight players that have transferred in game. Rafael Guerrero with a very interesting move that might be replicated in a real transfer pretty soon. Andreas Sheldrup, one of the top talents for his age group, recently completing the move to Benfica. Trumzo will need some luck on their side if they want to advance, but their featured player is a 54 rated left wing back named Daniel Bassi. We're moving forward quickly up to the January transfer window and for league results, some similarities to what's going down in Italy right now. Napoli leading the way and we have done just the enough to advance out of the group stage into the knockouts of the Champions League. Points pretty evenly distributed across all teams. We've made some progress in our starting 11 and substitutes. A lot of these younger players are developing nicely but we've got one pre-contract departure on Hel Di Maria heading back to the Premier League as he joins up with West Ham in Season 2. But some great storylines in our first knockout stage matchup of the Champions League against Spurs. First off, they've completed the signing of Unai Simon, despite the fact that Hugo Lloris is still going strong at an 85 rating. The first leg ends in a 3-1 result in our favor, the only goal for Spurs coming from one of our loanees, Kulusevski. We were also victorious in the second leg, winning 2-0 and advancing to the quarterfinals against Manchester City. This will be our first fixture in April, but the month prior, we've been in great form, unbeaten in the league. That was enough to give us the March Manager of the Month award, but City have improved 
their back line even further by completing this signing of Jimenez. I've got to say though, it was their attack that did wonders. A 5-2 win for City in the first leg and a 1-0 victory in the second leg. It was always going to be a rebuild in Vieira's first year at Juve, but a third place finish in Serie A, quarterfinal exit in the Copa Italia and the Champions League. Napoli dropping off significantly from where they were at in the winter as Inter win the league title due to goal differential. Salernitana, Lecce, and Cremonense will see relegation to Serie B. Speaking of which, it's Palermo and Parma that see automatic promotion to Italy's top flight. Napoli do end up winning the Coppa Italia, so one trophy added for them. Real Madrid winning the Super Cup against Frankfurt at season's start. They also go back to back in the Champions League, defeating Manchester City on penalties. Arsenal get the win against Feyenoord in what would be a very exciting Europa League final. And Villarreal get the win against West Ham in the Conference League final. No surprise as Vlahovic was the top goal scorer at the club, 30 from 50. That still didn't put him as the top goal scorer in Serie A. Simeone and Taremi equal on 25 goals to lead the league. After nearly a full year away due to injury, Chiesa sees his return to Juve and leads the club in assists. He ranks as the 10th best assist maker in Serie A. Taremi leading the category. What an impressive season from him. I do want to give you an update on some players that we have here on loan. Locatelli up plus three in his rating to 85, and Moise Keane up plus five in his rating to 83. So some decisions to be made there, but our homegrown talent Coppola is up plus nine to an 80 overall rating. And we found some great talents through our youth scouting. An Italian goalkeeper, Alessandro De Angelis, a 64 rated talent, only 16 years old and potential at 90 to 94. Another solid goalkeeper option from Brazil, Gabriel Rodriguez, 64 rated, 16 years old, 88 to 94 potential. We've also added a French center attacking mid in Arnaud Aubert, 70 rated, 90 to 94 potential. We need to improve this Juve team quickly and see our manager rating rise. Season 2 ready to get underway and our hopes and ambitions stay the same, trying to win Serie A and the Champions League with this young squad. If you're enjoying this story with the era so far, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. We should be able to accomplish some of these board objectives for domestic success, trying to win the league title, and for the Champions League looking to reach the final. All the departures last season has seen a massive rise to our transfer budget. I don't see any way possible of us spending 500 million, but we will see some outgoing departures. I was waiting for a Premier League offer for Dejan Kulusevski. While I imagine Spurs will exercise the option to bring him in on a permanent basis, City was the first somewhat realistic team to submit an offer. Kulusevski leaving on a 57.5 million fee. Dennis Zakaria also heading off to the Premier League as he joins Arsenal on a 40 million move. Arthur making the return to La Liga as he joins up with Villarreal for 25 million. Piazza will transfer to Galatasaray on a 5 5 million transfer fee. Our final outgoing departure is Gori, who joins Dusseldorf for 1 million. Out of our two loanies last season, I felt like bringing back Locatelli had to be a priority for us. At this stage, he's one of Italy's best midfielders at an 87 overall. Moreover, there's not many players that can play the Regista role as well as he does controlling the midfield and acting as a playmaker. It'll be a nine digit sum to complete the transfer of Locatelli, 100 million to Sassuolo. And all in all, it wasn't much more than his evaluation of 78 million. We'll continue the trend of signing a Crystal Palace player and Olise is arguably the highest potential talent in that squad. He's received already a lot of interest from Premier League clubs like Arsenal, but perhaps he wants to continue following in the footsteps of Patrick Vieira as he continues to develop as a player. If Olise does leave Palace, it'll probably be for around 35 plus million. While he's still in the 70s for his rating, I expect a lot of development for him in season two. I already previewed the signing of a young goalkeeper and there has been some interest from Juventus for Marco Carnesecchi. The Atalanta player has spent the season on loan at Cremonense and while that team has struggled this season, Carnesecchi has shown some bright spots. When you can work under the direction of Gianluigi Buffon, you probably have a bright future ahead as well as some big expectations as he joins us for 20 million. It's no surprise that Benfica continues to produce some of the best talents in world football. Chelsea's signing of Enzo Fernandez has taken the headlines, but there are some other great talents at the club that'll probably get a big transfer move in the summer. I think Antonio Silva falls under that list. The teenager is regularly featuring for this side at the highest level in the Champions League. This was an expensive transfer to finalize the deal, but I'm happy to splash out 50 million in order to complete the signing of someone 
that has potential to be special. Three new scouting networks for the season will be keeping our five-star, four-star scout in Italy for the remainder of the year. A scout will also be staying in France to search for any type of player, but we're going to be making the trip to North America and the United States, where Vieira got his inaugural job as a first-team manager at NYCFC. As far as our newly promoted Youth Academy talents, I'll be sending them out on loan for this season. Rodriguez returning to South America for the year. Albert heading to the Premier League as he joins up with Wolves for the season. And DeAngelis will be staying in Italy, transferring to Lecce where he can hopefully get some appearances. It should be six points for us in August as we begin the year against Genoa, then face Palermo. But here is the new look starting 11. Some new signings featuring in the squad as well as a player that returns on loan in Weston McKinney. But it's Coppola who takes the headlines in our season opener, now featuring as our first team striker with Moise Keane's departure. And for our Champions League group, we have Barcelona, Fenerbahce, and Slavia Praha. Grimaldo returning to Barcelona after a few years away at Benfica. Brescia recently getting called up to feature for the German national team, so I thought I would highlight him. And Slavia Praha do have some decent potential players. Jurosic is their best of the bunch. He's currently at a 71 overall. Big expectations as we head into January. As for our league standing, we are two points clear at the top. However, there are a lot of teams that are in the running. It was also a battle between us and Barcelona to see who would top our Champions League group. We both advance with a lot of points. But Barcelona get the better of us in head-to-head -head matchups. No surprise as first team minutes has seen a huge jump up in rating for a lot of our new signings. Still plenty of interest in our players as Chelsea looking to sign a new number 9 have included Enzo as well as 57.4 million as part of the deal. Fernandez up to an 85 rating. But into the round of 16 of the Champions League we go, starting against Bayern. News coming out that they have sacked their own head coach, and now Thomas Tuchel set to be in charge. Regardless of managerial tactics, we were by far the better side, winning the first leg 2-0 and a 1-1 draw in the second leg. That will see us through to the quarterfinals where we'll face Sevilla, a relatively easy matchup, but a team that still is fairly successful in Europe. Pedro Gonzalez Alves making the move from Portugal to Spain and now up to an 85 rating but it was really only going to be one score line a 3-0 win in the first leg and a 1-0 victory in the second leg it's going to be an Italian matchup in the semi-finals where we face Inter to be fair they don't need to complete a lot of transfers as they already have a stacked squad but Nabil Fakir joins them at an 85 rating. It was a 1-0 victory for us in the first leg and a 2-0 win in the second leg. Our defense showing out and we'll now play Barcelona in the Champions League final. Still a couple of fixtures to go before we see a conclusion to our Champions League campaign. But Fiorentina, we've seen a bit of a rivalry with them so far in the rebuild. Not only have we taken a few of their players, but we have also managed to secure the Coppa Italia with a 2-1 win in extra time. As a leader for this Juventus squad, squad and certainly a player for the future will have Chiesa lifting our first trophy of the rebuild and giving us a lot of momentum heading into the Champions League final. With that said, still one fixture remains in our league campaign and anything could happen. Napoli are currently leaders at the top, one point ahead of both us and Milan. We did our job defeating Atalanta 3-1. However, Napoli were also victorious, as were Milan. The relegation spots this season going to Sampdoria, Palermo, and Parma. For Serie B, Salernitana and Venezia see their promotion to Serie A. Real Madrid were once again Super Cup winners at the start of this season, with Spurs defeating Liverpool in the Europa League final, and Everton defeating Betis in the Conference League. We've been nearly flawless in our Champions League campaign up to this point, but all that matters is our performance in this final, and I'm actually implementing a change to how I simulate these real fixtures. Basically, there's a way to see how the AI face off against each other. So I'm not controlling any of the players. This is all computer tactics, which I think adds to the realism and also how much I enjoy career mode. It's something I'm going to be doing a lot more in the future. I'm going to leave an I card on the top right of your screen to the video that basically showed me how to do this. It's been around since the launch of FIFA, but there are a few extra steps you need to go through. Hopefully some of y'all can implement it into your own saves, but we do end up getting the opener courtesy of Vlach and he does get a second in the 75th minute. So things are looking like we will be victorious in this Champions League final. We do make a final change, bringing on Buffon so he can finally lift a Champions League trophy. He's been unsuccessful in the 2003, 2015, 
and 2017 Champions League Finals. I thought it would be only right for him to check off this heavily sought after trophy before he retires. I did not expect to be getting a manager position offer from Real Madrid right after that Champions League final, but after a very successful first season, they seem to have dropped off in season two. A fourth place finish in La Liga and a quarterfinals exit in the Champions League is certainly not up to par, especially when you have this team available. A recap of season two, Cesar's finished third in the league and of course winning the Coppa Italia and the Champions League. Vlahovic stepping up his goal numbers even more, this time he scored 39 from 56. That put him as the third best goal scorer in Syria. Martinez leading the way for Inter. Two of our center midfielders actually leading the way in the assist category. Both Torm and McKenney were in the top five for assists in Syria, third and fourth place respectively. It certainly helped that we had the most clean sheets in the league, a good debut season for Karnasecki. And Aloni update starting with Rodriguez. He's up plus six in his overall to a 70 rating. De Angelis up plus five to a 69 rating. And Aubert seems to be the top talent of our season one group. He's up plus seven in his rating to a 77 overall. We've got three more Youth Academy players to add. Piero Battaglia is a 65 rated Italian right wing back who has a potential of 87 to 93. Cedric Ray, a French striker who's at a 60 rating, 76 to 90 potential for him. And finally, our American talent, David Fraser, a 56 rated center forward slash striker, 79 to 94 potential. A very successful season for us, but we still have a lot of work to do for our manager rating. A third season ready to get underway at Juventus and all that's left for us is to become the top team in Serie A. These expectations aligned well with the board for domestic success. We again had the critical priority to win the league title and in the Champions League once again try to reach the final. Our transfer budget still over that 500 million mark and this year we're actually going to focus primarily on some big signings to help our chances in those simulations. Pal Torres has seen some rumors linking him to Juventus, especially last summer. He has moved to Arsenal in this save. Whereas last time Vieira uses connections at Manchester City to negotiate a transfer away, this time we'll look to spark an arrival as Pau Torres will be our first signing of the season. Of course, with career mode potentials, his evaluation is going to go even higher. We had to once again spend 100 million to complete the move. But similar to the Locatelli deal, it's not that much more than the player's evaluation. Juventus have signed their fair share of players from the Air Divisi. The main one that comes to mind is Matthias De Litt, who has now moved on to Bayern. But Mohamed Kudus is making a name for himself in his career, transferring to Lyon, and now he's going to be signing for one of the top teams in Italy and also featuring in our first team starting 11. It's a 60 million transfer fee to complete the signing of Kudus, and I expect him to contribute both plenty of goals and assists. Weston had a great second season for us at Juventus, but I do think the Premier League is a good fit for him. I'm not sure how his year is going to pan out with Leeds, but with finances being no problem for Newcastle, I think it's a good landing spot for him. I found it pretty interesting that Newcastle also submitted the same offer for Chris Richards. One other departure with a center back, Gatsi, joining Borussia Dortmund. But our season sees a start in the UEFA Super Cup where we'll play Europa League winner Spurs. They're slowly but surely adding some trophies to their collection, but we've got a formidable starting 11 to match up against them. The last time we had a cup final go to extra time, we were victorious, but as this one goes to penalties, it's Spurs that were winners. And it's not going to be an easy road ahead as we face Inter to begin our Serie A campaign also losing that fixture, so we'll need to redeem ourselves moving forward. Our Champions League group is not going to be easy with Atleti, Leverkusen, and Dynamo Kiev. Memphis Depay signing for Atleti at an 85 overall. Matthias Cunha returning back to the Bundesliga where he features for Bayer Leverkusen at an 84 rating. And Denis Popov, Dynamo Kiev's top potential player, still at the club at a 78 overall. Will we be able to turn things around in the January transfer window? As for league standings, it's Inter and Atalanta that are both ahead of us. And to my disappointment, we don't advance out of our Champions League group after winning the competition last season. We do still have European football as we drop down to the Europa League. Looking at the quality of our squad, we've got to be favorites in that competition, but we do have the EA Sports Super Cup where we as Coppa Italia winners face Serie A winners Napoli. And once again, we lose a cup final three to two. So from now on, our focus will be on the Europa League and Serie A starting in the preliminary rounds of Europa League, CFR Cluj will be our opponents. They've got the former crew mode wonder kid Simone Scoufet, 
who at his peak potential was featuring for Udinese. Unfortunately, he's got to deal with our attack as we put four goals past him in the first leg and secure a 2-2 draw in the second leg, advancing 6-2 on aggregate and facing Everton in the round of 16. Moise Keane staying at the club and at an exceptional 88 rating, but once again, our attack balling out, getting a 3-0 win in the first leg and a 2-1 win in the second leg. 5-0 on aggregate means that we face Lyon in the quarterfinals. It appears that Baumgartner has signed as a replacement at Lyon for Kudus's departure, but we continue dominating in these fixtures, a 3-1 win in the first leg, and we lose the second leg, but still advance 5-4 on aggregate, meaning that we'll place Hoffenheim in the semi-finals. Callum Hudson-Odoi with a very interesting career trajectory. He is spending the year on loan at Bayer Leverkusen, but after returning to Chelsea, he seemed to like the Bundesliga where he features for Hoffenheim. But it was a 2-1 win in the first leg for us and a 1-1 draw in the second leg. We've done enough to reach the Europa League final and face Roma. With this being the last match of our season, we can recap some competitions and we've done enough in Serie A to win the competition by a fair margin, 11 points clear of the next place team. We're once again going to let Buffon lift this trophy. He might no longer be our number one, but he's always going to contribute some leadership for us. Relegation spots this year go to Salinertana, Empoli, and Pisa. Brescia and Sampdoria seeing promotion from Serie B. Roma, the team that we're facing in the Europa League final, win the Coppa Italia against Milan. Of course, the season started with a loss against Spurs in the UEFA Super Cup. Real Madrid rebounding in the Champions League as they defeat PSG and Marseille, getting the win against a team that I didn't even know was in career mode, so fair play to them. Not quite as many goals from Vlahovic this year, but still an exceptional output, 34 from 57. It ranked him as, again, the third best goal scorer in Serie A. Chiesa returning as the assist leader from the left midfield position. He had the second most assists in the league with Josip Brekalo leading the way with 15 from 38. And once again, we had the clean sheets leader, Karnaseki, despite being young in age, has the veteran experience. I'll also be highlighting our best youth academy talent at the end of the Europa League final. All that's left for us is to once again lift a European competition at season's end. We're getting the warm-ups in and Judging by the quality of our starting 11, we've got to be the favorites for this one. We're going to start off with one of the better goals scored in this rebuild, if not the best. It had to be Olise, one of the signings we made from Crystal Palace, and what a ball from Locatelli to set that up. The thing I like about not controlling these players is that they should be fitting in to their actual play style. So for Locatelli, because he's got great passing and vision, he can set up that perfect over the top pass to Olise. It's Coppola to set up Kudus for our second goal in the 26th minute. So clearly we were the favorites in this one and we were showing that from the goals we were scoring. Heading into the second half, we just got such great link of play between our attackers and even our midfielders moving forward. Turam with those high, high work rates gets a third for us just 50 minutes in. Roma trying to answer back and find some defensive shape, but they could not keep up with our passes. Vlahovic took him a while to get involved in the goals, but he will be scoring the fourth in what has been a dominant display from Juventus against what I would call one of our Serie A rivals. Corner kick as Torum rises to the occasion, getting his brace and five goals in the 78th minute. This final bit of play is just unlucky from Roma. It looked like we were kind of using the clock and we still end up with possession in the final third. Smart pass from Turam. I would say he was man of the match. Two goals and an assist will set up Kudus as he scores his brace and adds a sixth goal for us. Chiesa lifting this Europa League title as we bring a close to today's episode and this rebuild. If we ever pick up this save again, I think Aubert has to be the Youth Academy talent that we showcase moving forward.